Hey, it's Mr. Alred, and we're going to graph some piecewise functions. And the first one I have here is f of x equals, and it has two pieces. The first one is x plus 1 if x is less than negative 3. Um, since I'm going to graph this thing, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and start that. I have my graph over here, and I'm going to graph this thing definitely in the region when we are less than negative three. So I'm going to kind of highlight that region in green and I'm going to come up here and highlight it in green just so we can keep track of that. Uh, the second piece of this function is the absolute value of x and that's if x is greater than or equal to negative three. So that will be the right side of my graph past negative three. So just kind of keeping in mind that <clears throat> I have a possibly a disconnect in my graph at x equals negative 3. But let's see what we can do here. So the first one, x plus 1. That is basically y equals x plus 1, which is a linear function, which is a line. And if you're trying to graph that, I'm going to use more of the graph than I need, but it has a y-intercept at 1. And then it has a slope of 1, so it goes up 1 over 1. So if you're thinking about the things this thing does, it has a slope of 1, and it has a y-intercept at 0, 1. Now, if we create this line, and let me see if I can do a halfway decent job here. I think the slower I go, the worse it gets. It's supposed to be a straight line. So if I was just graphing y equals x plus 1, it would be a straight line across here. But I can only keep the part over here on left of negative 3 where I shaded. So I'm going to take my eraser and try and get rid of parts of this, the parts that aren't in the right place. Okay. Now I know a few things changed there, but let's see. It says x less than negative 3, so that means where I have the value of x equals negative 3, I'll have an open circle there. So I'm only keeping the left part of that line. Okay, So that green line fits the green description that I have labeled in the green domain area. So then purple, let's see if I have a purple marker. Well, it's going to be a purple pencil. Well, I have a purple pencil. I've never used it before. Um, but absolute value of x if x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So absolute value from our parent functions looks like a v. And I could graph the whole v if I want to. The key here is I can graph more than I need, but I have to remember to come back and take the part I don't want away. So this is what the absolute value of x looks like. But I have to stop it at negative 3. So I'm going to come back and erase some stuff. You don't have to put too much in if you don't need it, but I'm trying to make a point here. And the fact that this is a greater than or equal to means there's a closed circle here. So the green ended up in the green region, which connects to less than negative 3. The purple ended up in the purple region, which connects to negative 3 and greater. Okay, So... You can use the whole graph grid to help you place things based off of how you graph lines or parabolas or um, parent functions moved around. But in the end, you need to make sure that you go back and erase anything that kind of crosses over any boundaries that they shouldn't. Okay, So that's one function. Let's try and do another one here. <clears throat> All right, so we're stepping up our game here because g of x is a piecewise function that has three parts. Okay, So the first part is x plus 1 if x is less than negative 2. So let's go back and try the same thing we did before. x is less than negative 2. So I'm going to come over here on my graph and I'm going to kind of shade this negative 2 region. This is not something you have to have on your graph, but I'm trying to make sure that we uh, are pretty clear. So again, this is go back to green. This is y equals x plus 1, so it's another slope of 1, a y-intercept of 0, 1. So once again, I could use 
the grid to kind of graph this line. Let's see if I can do a better job this time without being so wavy, I'm getting off track very quickly. So the whole line looks like this, slope of one, y-intercept of one. Um, definitely can't use it. I have to stop it right there where x is negative two, and it's just less than negative two, so it's an open circle. And you can go back and check. If I plug in negative two, negative two plus one would give me negative one. So look at that. X is negative two, y is negative one. It works out. Okay, so let's see. That was the first piece, so I just went ahead and took care of that while we were here. The second piece here, x squared plus 3, and that's if we're between negative 2 and positive 2. So over here is negative 2, here's positive 2. So we're in the center region, and what we're going to be graphing is x squared plus 3, and that is a parent function of x squared and it is shifted up 3. So normal x squared is a u shape at 0, 0, but we're going to move it up 3 so that it's centered at 0, positive 3. So I'm just going to kind of make this parabola. Okay, parabola goes on forever, but we're limited it to the blue spot. So let's come back and I'm doing this freehand, so we might lose the exactness here. Don't feel bad if we do. Um, but we have... Oh, I left off my, my endpoints. I meant to have these as equal to. So go back and check that. Um, but this should come up, and I believe it'll be closed here and closed here if you're looking at the graph. But it won't go to the left of negative 2. It won't go to the right of positive 2. So make sure you do have <clears throat> those equals to on there. That was my intent. Now, it'd still work if you didn't have them, but you'd have open circles in a couple places. All right, so that is the second piece, x squared plus 3 in the center. So then we need the third piece. Let's see what the third piece is. The third piece is, that purple looked really nice, didn't it? Third piece is square root of x minus 2, and that is when x is greater than 2. So greater than 2 is over this way, to the right of 2. So let's see here. Let's go back to purple. We're doing square root of x minus 2, so that is a parent of absolute value of x, and it is down 2. So let's see here. We know that the absolute value of, excuse me, the square root function starts at 0, 0 and comes out looking like, like this, but now we got to move it down to. So let's do that. Let's move it down to, and it looks something like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and get rid of the parent graph that I put here. And then I'm going to come back and say, well, I need to get rid of the part that's not in the right region. So I may not have perfection here, but it looks like I didn't get rid of enough of it either. Let's get rid of it. Well, I got rid of the right amount. Um, let's put us a little open circle somewhere around here. And that's what we would have. We would have something that looks like this. Now, that's supposed to be a curve, but because it's out there where it flattens out a little bit more, it doesn't look like it. But we've got three pieces graphed in the three regions. Okay.